I'm against in second. Uh, that's right. very good. Uh, being against is uh, my natural predisposition. <laughs> you know, I'm German. It's like, uh, I'm whatever. I'm against it. <laughs> well, you know, I guess being French doesn't help either, does it? <laughs> no. But this time, this time, well, anyway, uh, we can discuss this when we actually start this thing. Welcome, welcome to another debate, another week in Two Debate Universe. Uh, I'm Dirk, one of your two debaters, and I'm watching at a healthy, friendly, smiling, in the sun posing Sebastian. How are you doing, Sebastian? In the, in the sun? Yeah, that, that, <laughs> I see sun from the side. Or is that like, a, yeah. did, you, did you prep some light source next to you? Hang on, it's actually not raining. You're right. Okay, so uh, <laughs> we're going to wrap this. <laughs> I'm going to wrap this up. Yeah, you have to go outside Very, now for the next 10 minutes because there's sun. <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's, it was meant to rain today. Um, so, so okay, let's make it very, very easy for you. Since I have won the, the last 95 debates, let's agree that today is a draw. <laughs> and we're done. <laughs> ah, all right. I take that for a yes. Uh, of course, of course. Uh, given that you won the last 95 debates, let me check. Oh, you didn't win the last 95 <laughs> debates. <laughs> I'm sorry. You just... Did I, get, I think you're, you're in the lead with two debates. Do, do, I, do I get a, a, bad, a bad mark for lying, for pretending I have won 95? Yeah. When it's actually I mean, not true? socially, that score's really, really low. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, what would be the consequences, Mr. Pie like more debating a joke on your t-shirt? No, more debating is the consequence. No matter what you Ooh. do, more debating. Which brings us back to our motion today. Um our motion today is about social scoring. Um what is social scoring, Sebastian? Do we wanna wanna define that before we jump into the debate? Um I had a bad joke about this. I'm not gonna do my bad joke. Uh, social scoring. So I don't know how to define it. I guess it's a public or private system of scoring individuals. And this gives you access or limits you uh, in terms of access to other services and benefits, I suppose. This, I guess, is a vague general purpose definition. Yeah, so social scores or social scoring, I would say, is um, getting scores like points for something that either comes from your social behavior or influences your social abilities. So it's like uh, you get scores and either those scores t uh, um, are an indication what you're allowed to do or they reflect something that you do. I Maybe maybe that is something that we can work with. I don't know. Okay. But so, yeah, so in a fine. nutshell, most people, when they hear social scoring, actually mean the kind of stuff that's happening in China, right? Uh, so I guess... Uh, the social, it's called, I think, the social credit system. Yeah, something translated like that. in English. Yeah. Uh, in, interesting enough, and I'll get back on this in, in my little segment, but it's, uh, it's beyond just social. It's also about economic reputation. Yeah. Uh, not just your social reputation. So that's, the social aspect may mean something broader than what, what people may may think initially yeah and for our to, for our motion today we actually picked a i find fascinating topic to debate over which is social scoring will make the world better so it's a good thing to have social scoring and uh the flip of the coin made it so that uh you're going to defend that motion you're going to be for that you will argue social scoring is indeed making the world a better place and you go first and uh yeah are we ready let's to do, do this let's do it let's do it okay let's do this sebastian goes first and argues for the motion french idiots yes i know for some of you it's redundant it means the same thing if you say french or idiot but stay with me french idiots walking around on beaches when the law currently the lockdown law requires them to stay at home. So why do you prefer? Do you prefer the current system, which is handing out 
hundreds of thousands of fines, like actual money, or a social score? It's a question mark. And the reason it's a question, it's because uh, I think fines are probably unfair because, honestly, if you're rich, you don't care to pay a 30 euro or 100 euro fine. But social scoring may actually even out the playing field. Whether you're rich or poor, you'll get you know, a bonus or a negative point, and it can lead to other consequences. Here's the thing. Social scoring already exists. If you look at um, Uber, you get a rating uh, by the driver. So initially, people did not notice, and I think I had mentioned this in another of our, uh, of our debates, I used this scoring to know which woman I would date. And if she did not have at least 4.6, I believe, out of 5, there was no way I should date her. Because statistically, it would show that it would be a disaster in terms of a relationship. So it could be her, it could be me, it doesn't matter, it just doesn't work out. So actually, social scoring was useful by just using the Uber rating. And I really encourage you to check your partner's uh, rating or your date's rating on Uber. It'll give you a good sense. 4.6 is my rough estimate as a minimum threshold. You already have credit score for mortgages. That's also also the case where in a number of countries you have a score which allows you to have access to uh, a better interest rate on, on mortgages. Let's not forget, social scoring can be regulated. Uh, it can be used in China, indeed, to prohibit and deny people to access flights and trains. I think, personally, that's going too far. Right? Denying people the access of public transportation is probably a step too far. So, just like with the pandemic, by the way, we can learn from others. We can learn from the mistakes and the, uh, the successes of other countries, like China. And China's experiment is a good one, I think, to learn from in its pitfalls and also its successes. Uh, I'll go in more detail afterwards in terms of the uh, negative factors that could play into these social scores and how we could go around some of the uh, difficulties and the problems that are related to the social scoring. And now on to Dirk. Let's hear his argument. I'm actually fairly happy that you already define social scoring as something that exists in other places than just China. Because if I open up the news and if I read articles, it sounds almost like people always talk about the social scoring system in China and completely forget, as you mentioned, rightly so, that there is a credit scoring system in almost every country, that there are things like the Uber ratings and such. And your compatibility with Uber compatible women aside, actually those scores define what you're able to do. I know someone who is consistently being turned down by Uber drivers and at some point discovered that she had for some reason a really low Uber score. Now, I know that person. She's actually friendly. You would not date her, which is a social consequence of her low Uber score, apparently. And that brings me to problem number one. Uh, you have no control over the sources of data in a social score. The assumption is that the group of people giving the score may be right in the end. But the fact of the matter is, um, if, you're, if you have an unlucky streak, if you're sick for some reason, if you're, if you're the kind of person people just don't connect that well and don't like, if the, the rules that the score is uh, done by are somewhat arbitrary, if there is a mistake in the system, if there is somebody accessing the system without your, your approval, and I could go on and on and on, in a nutshell, if there is shit data in your score, you're the one to suffer. And I do think this is not making the world a better place because it takes away the air that you need to ne renegotiate your position in the world. It almost turning into a law by itself uh, then ultimately govern your destiny up from there. And uh, yes, it makes you dependent on the whims of technical systems, other people and arbitrary um, algorithms that you had no no chance on influencing in the first place. So it's on top of all of this undemocratic as well and can be cheated. So no, social scoring in all its forms actually has shares the same problems and it's not and the problem is that it's definitely turning the world for the worse and not for the better. Next up, Sebastian. Let's hear his rebuttal. So you mentioned the fact that in the case of the Uber rating, you have no control of that rate over that rating and it could have consequences. That is true, 
but at the same time, we can examine things across two angles. The first one is you could design a system by which naturally a bad score would decay over time. That means that a bad score you, you would have gotten maybe two, five years ago is not taken into account into your current score. So you could design a system where you know, you can you know, checks and balances, if you will. Uh, also, the additional thing that you could do, the second angle, is you could have remedies in place. So you could actually um, have good actions which counterbalance your negative actions. And whether it's fair or unfair, it can happen. There's no system is perfect. That I, I give, give to you. The algorithm can be wrong and you can fine-tune it. But a lot of things in life and a lot of systems and machines are also not perfectly designed. And we fine-tune and we learn from this. I consider the score can be no so much of no, not so much of a score, but actually a record, a track, a history of a person's behavior. And sometimes, you know, the data will be incorrect, but overall, it should paint a fairly, fairly accurate picture. Um, but let's be very specific in terms of what I call bad behavior. Uh, and I don't want to fall into the, I think, the trap of moral, traditional moral values. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about behavior such as ensuring that you're paying your taxes on time ensuring that you're paying your bills. You know, how often are you violating traffic regulation and traffic rules, uh, red light violations, making reservations at restaurants and not showing up, same things at the hotels, or not sorting out your recycling or personal waste, using others, you know, other people's public transportation ID cards, that kind of stuff, right, is the bad behavior I'm talking about. Nothing that is, I think, too controversial. And if it is, I suggest we just get, get rid of it because indeed there's just too much controversy around it. Um, so I'd be happy to debate maybe more specifically on these negative traits, which, again, as I said, over time would decay over time in terms of negative score. Or you can do positive things, such as donating blood, donating to charity, being involved as a volunteer for community services, uh, and so on. Um, I think things that overall help to make the world a better place. I, I would find it very surprising if you or anyone disagrees that the negative and the positive traits I just described would not help in making the world a little bit better. Uh, and again, uh, it takes the aspect away from whether you're rich or poor. And therefore, if you're rich, you can escape a system in which finding someone is the default answer, which is the current system in most places. Maybe just as a conclusion here, I want to I want to ins insist that I, I am conscious that there's a risk of this data being misused. So we need to agree on you know a centralized versus decentralized approach. In fact, you can look today at the pandemic. Right? Germany and France are fighting against each other indirectly because one wants to have a decentralized contact tracing app, Germany, versus France, which is much more of a centralized uh, a proponent of centralized contact tracing. So fair enough. Just like in everything that involves surveillance, scoring people's identities. We want to be very careful as how we design it, but the principle remains the same. I think the scoring aspect helps to make the world a better place. Now, it's Dirk's turn. The main currency in any type of scoring system, social scoring being no difference, is actually trust. So let's have a look at who we have to trust and who is gaining trust. So the idea is that people that are scored favorably can be trusted more. And uh, the way they get the score is the other entity we need to trust. Now, all of these systems are essentially technical systems. You can win scores and you can lose score. And you can win and lose by doing things that are in, or, uh, in favor or against it. And in order for that to happen, there's number one why it wouldn't make the world a better place. You have to create a surveillance system. You have to basically create a system where constantly data is collected about people. The identity has to be known somehow. And people can be um, assigned scores in, a, in that system. And that means we are all basically agreeing to being surveilled in that world and having that data that's collected about us used to restrict our freedom. That's number two. Uh, in today's world, for better or worse, everybody has the same access to all the systems. Granted, some are expensive. Sometimes the money that you have available will limit what you can do. But that will remain so. That will be so in the future. Social scoring is not replacing wealth or currency or money. It's basically an additional restriction. And that's why it's in addition actually making the world a better place. It limits freedom. Um, now... 
looking at China, and I, I bring up that example now, um, is actually a good illustration for why that is bad. Because the social scoring system is not only looking at what you, Sebastian, may have done, how you are rated by the Uber driver, how if you are stopping in a traffic light, it's also looking at all the people around you and how they behave. And especially when you are trying to run for higher office or when you try to have any trusted position, trust that the system puts in you is decided based on that score. And now we have a surveillance apparatus that's limiting your freedom and on top of it all limits how you can participate in society. And please don't give me that this is only China because they are so extreme. I do think this is exactly what every country every society will at some point try to implement and again i would say this is the world not being a change for the better but actually change for the worse so all in all um i don't think social scoring is a good idea i get why it's there i get what it's good for if we could limit it i would even go as far as to say it has its advantages but um given the nature of the systems and given our desire to to uh, automate this, this is a recipe for disaster and not making the world a better place. Actually, quite the contrary. Final statements. Sebastian goes first. Bad behavior exists, will continue to exist. It's a fact of life. And good behavior... Um, is often not socially or economically rewarded. If you look at bad behavior, if you're rich, it doesn't really matter because you can pay the fine, it doesn't really affect you. If you're poor, it does affect you. So we have an unequal system today. How can we fix that? One solution is the social scoring mechanism. Um, in this case, nobody can evade it or, it's in, in it or it can impact you the same way whether you're rich or poor. It creates something a little bit more equal. It may not be the only system, but in the... In the, with the goal of trying to make the world a better place, it is a good incentive. It actually encourages people to have these positive actions. In fact, we're not deciding on the system today. We're just building the framework. We could actually ignore all the negative aspects and just say the social scoring is just a positive social scoring, whereby you only score the positive things, and that's it. There's nothing negative. Right? So we, it could go both ways. We could say it's both positive and negative, just positive or just negative. So there's many ways to construct this. I think the principle is valuable because it creates things more equal. Uh, of course, then you have to decide who decides to give the ratings, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I view this more as a, maybe a, a track record, as I said before. So it doesn't have to whitelist or blacklist people, but maybe it could go with your CV, right? And oh, there's all the good deeds that Dirk has done over the past five years and everything else is re erased because it has been too long, more than five or two years. It doesn't have to give a rating as such. It could just be, oh, there's sort of a history of things, and it goes along with, uh, with your CV. So overall, I do think social scoring is a good incentive and can help the world becoming a better place. Dirk. I like our vision of social scoring being a force for less bias, and I love the fact that I can prove you wrong immediately. So... Let's take an example, the Uber rating. By now it's studied and well understood that there are groups of people that are chronically lower scored than others. Black people, for instance. Black people get lower scores in the US as passengers and as drivers than the others. So social scoring, there is no way that it's not going to be biased. And it's not a force for uh, being treated more equal. In fact, it's an additional source for difference. So people that are poor today will have a poor social score tomorrow on top of being poor. And people that are rich today give a nice tip and receive a positive score in the end. And they have been rich because they look good, are the right skin color and have the right jobs. And that's going to just be the same with social scoring. So at best, social scoring will not change even a tiny bit of that world. But at worst, social scoring will be an additional force limiting freedom and additional source for error to happen, and an additional reason to have surveillance states going rampant. So no, no, sorry to say, I do like technical solutions, but social scoring in particular will not make the world a better, but actually a worse place. I, I, you make a pretty compelling 
point about the fact that you can always buy your system, buy your way out of the system. Um, yeah, I don't disagree with that. Um, and maybe that's why we could design a system by which you're only keeping track of the good things you do. And there is no, it, it's not tied to any, to any, I guess, economic incentive, except that it gives you a good extra bonus on your CV. Like if you're, you know, if you didn't go, had the chance to go to university, maybe showing that you're involved in your community and you get credit for it in terms of a social score, a positive one, can actually maybe go a longer way than doing nothing. What um, do you think? I don't know if my vision of a better world is automatically a vision where people are doing social work um, to have a better social score. I much rather have people that are driven to do good in the world, do the good things, and people that are not. For all I care, they can sit at home the whole day and watch TV and eat chips. <laughs> like, I, I don't know why we should nudge people into behaving like good citizens. Uh, my definition of freedom basically says, you pick and choose. It's your call. And as long as you don't harass anybody and as long as you don't uh, damage your surroundings, you're, you're good. And uh, that, that is like, uh, for me, social scoring kind of contradicts that whole idea because it basically tries to nudge you into compl uh, complacent behavior. I guess we would need to define what a better world means. For you, what I'm hearing is a better world is one where we're, where we're free or more free or where we defend our freedoms. And for me, a better world, at least in the way I was using it in our, in our discussion, is a world where we help each other out. And it's, it's not incompatible, by the way, uh, but it's slightly different yes. perspective, right? You can be both free and encourage people to help each other without forcing them, obviously. But it could be an incentive, but it's not mandatory, right? So it doesn't encroach and, on their freedom to actually and act on I mean, on the that. core thing is um, no one gives you... The, the social scores we say to the, uh, see today have only very little to do with actually helping each other out. So if you, you, know, if you look at what, the many credit score systems around the world, Actually, they have not been designed to, to not you to help others out. They have been designed to make sure that you pay your credit, that you basically pay money that you loaned. Or uh, in some countries, it's even designed in a way that incentivizes you to make, uh, um, to, to, to build up uh, debt and pay it back. So it's, it's designed by people that have money in a way that ensures that they keep getting more money. And I do, I do think. The credit score, the, the social score systems that we are going to see, the question is who is designing them and why? And you basically have on one end, you have the typical capitalistic societies where, that we are members of as well, uh, the Western style of capitalism, where basically those systems are designed by people who actually want to make sure that money is being paid back and uh, you're, you keep being active as a consumer. And on the other end, you have the, the let's say, more authoritarian, uh, authoritarian systems like uh, in Singapore or China, or uh, I'm sure there are plenty of other countries that have an appetite for this as well, not only in Asia. And they, they are actually more interested in you being a... Bre uh, a, a, a um, complacent and uh, complacent follower a citizen who is not too critical somebody who falls into line and the systems there are designed in the same way so I, I would say both extremes actually make me worry so it's like I, I don't know what who, who would need to design a social scoring system that actually hits the sweet spot between those two but uh, I I as long as we cannot ensure that that a system is designed in that way I would I would be very skeptical Tell me more because I on uh, on this on the following I I upon doing my old research I discovered and su it was surprised that Germany had this credit rating system if I'm not mistaken called yeah. Schufa and it uses and I was I don't know if that's true that's why I'm, I'm bringing this up to you it re reuses geolocation and health records to determine access to credit and health insurance is this a mandatory thing like do you have to provide this this or it's already provided so automatically. When so the fact of the matter is, or private health I, insurance? Um, I actually personally, I don't really know the full scope of what Shufa is using. But the fact is, if you if you sign a contract of a certain type, like you want to rent a house or you want to want to buy a car, in the, the, it's a certain amount. Then usually they have like a segment in the contract where you give where you grant Shufa the right 
to get to collect information about that whole transaction. And yes, that includes health and everything. And they they calculate a score. Um, it's it has been a couple of years ago when when basically in in Germany there was a lawsuit basically granting the rights to every citizen to demand knowledge about that score. So uh, it's a fairly recent development that we even can contact Shufa and force them to tell us what they stored about us. Hmm. Um, and yes, uh, Shufa is one of those things where I feel like this is a good example of where it goes wrong. It's uh, be because if you if you for some reason ha fall into the low end of that score, it's severe limits what you can do people are not giving you credit anymore people are refusing to to allow you to rent a home uh, you cannot uh, uh, lease a car all these things so it may at some point be a really really problematic force in your life the you'd be I don't know if you're aware of it but actually in France we don't have a credit scoring system uh, the only thing that you do have is a list a blacklist of people who are suspended from using banking services because of fraud or misuse or whatever like it's a very small number uh, or people who maybe i'm not too sure if it's in, in the case in france but forbidden to go to casinos also because they're just like ad addicted to it so they can ask themselves to to be put on that list but other than that there's no credit scoring scoring system like in the UK or the US, and I discovered in, in Germany that I had no mm. idea. And it surprised me because of the history, obviously, of both France and Germany regarding you know, tracking people and putting the names of people in a database yep. and whether they're eligible to something or not. Um, the sensitive topic, as always. So that's We have a me. second one of these. Um, we have another right. score, scoring system around tra um, uh, about traffic. So if, you, if, you're, um, if you're a bad driver... Um, you get you collect scores like as a punishment. If you're driving too fast, you collect scores. If you have a certain number of scores, they take away your driver's license, and that is a signal apparently into many other things as well. So it's a it's a weird system we have. And yes, uh, this is surprising, uh, especially in Germany. And I I don't think that uh, the typical data protection activists actually are big fans of Schufa or that other scoring system. I can tell you. So, uh, yeah, I guess we'll, uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens. I think one good example will be, what ha although it's not connected to credit scoring or social scoring, is this contact tracing app, because it's a similar debate of privacy yes. intrusion and, and having people giving access or being forced to give access. But honestly, access. I think this, is, this one uh, actually is now settled. Um, with Google and Apple basically saying, oh, we partner and we pick the decentralized version where we don't store any contact information centrally. Basically, it, it's done. Like whatever France wants to have. It's, true. it's like everybody else will use whatever Google and Apple comes up with. So, Which is, which is ironic, right? Because uh, like the way these companies have been painted, painted as opposed to yes. these countries is the other way around, right? Like to protect privacy by the countries and criticizing Google and Apple and others for not respecting privacy enough. And now it's kind of the, the in French you say, la roseur arrosé, right? The guy who's like, I don't know how you say it. I need to freaking check the expression. I have no idea. <laughs> and of course, it's, oh, all right. I found the expression in English. There's two expressions. It's the boot is, in, is, in, is on the other foot now. The boot is on the other foot now. Or it's a case of the... Biter bit, hmm. I guess. Hmm, never heard that. The boot is on the other foot now. It's basically exchanging yes. roles. That's what it means. Uh, La Rosé La Rosé is the one who's being uh, made wet, you know, by someone throwing water at them. Is is the one throwing the water at ah, the other one? Okay. Yeah, I mean, in that particular discussion, yeah. it's interesting to see that. Oh, and he's out. In that particular discussion, it's it's uh, mm -hmm. it's interesting to see that basically Google and Apple came up with a security and privacy-wise best suggestion for how to do this, while in all the other countries there have been suggestions floating around that we're basically a privacy nightmare. Um, so um, yeah, I'm I'm happy to see that Apple and Google is a force for let's say quote unquote good here, um, but it is an interesting discussion to follow. Anyway, you have to go, right? So shall we wrap up? I do have to go. I just, just ask some person to wait for me. Um, let's wrap up. Love the discussion, an interesting one. Uh, I don't know what made you come with that topic. I know it was you. Uh, no, do you I don't. What made you I think, think it's of this just topic? an interesting no? topic, so I thought we'd debate. Yeah, yeah, it is. And there was actually, by, by the way, I think we talked about it before, but there was a Black Mirror episode 
on something similar, which is also, I love the Black Mirror episodes. Yes. So if uh, our listeners are keen to see a one hour or 40 minute, I can't remember, uh, implementation of what we discussed in a slightly futuristic world, but not so distant from today, it's a very interesting episode. So check out, I can't remember the title of that specific episode, but it's a, it's a Black I Mirror I will link to one. it in the notes as well. Quite interesting. Um, and, and we debated something similar in the past which is also a link I will put into the notes. We talked about scoring once before. What? So um, where we talked about, what was uh, it, it about? was about uh, giving each other scores actually. So why it is a bad idea ah. to, well, if, you, if the Uber driver, to stick with that example, did his job or her job to drive you from point A to point B, why do you still think you need to give that person a, a rating? And that's um, right. So it was a, a related yet slightly different aspect of this, a similar topic. Yeah. I, I guess my memory is playing tricks on me because now, now it reminds me of it. But um, I guess you could fool me in, in redoing <laughs> the same, <laughs> the same debate. Yes. Right. It'd be interesting if we switch sides and we don't even we remember what we said uh, before. We debate so long until until we have the right <laughs> uh, right score. Until one of us dies. Yes, that's basically. what we do. To be so let's agree on not dying, not anytime soon anyway. And because that, we, we I, need to keep de uh, debating. Sounds All right. good. All right. Thank you to our listeners for bearing with us and our and my city jokes. I'm not going to comment on the intelligence of your own humor. <laughs> and uh, stay tuned. We'll have more episodes coming up. Bye bye. Bye. Take care. <laughs>